Hi, this is Travis here at Exercise Lab with another video for you guys. So I'm a doctor of physical therapy for those who don't know me. And I want to talk to you guys about kind of just a fun one today, sort of a novelty exercise, nothing that's going to be, you know, groundbreaking or state of the art. Um, kind of a new spin on maybe some older exercises you've been doing with something you may already have laying around. And this is basically just a, a dip belt here. I took the chain off and I'm going to show you how to rig it up with some bands. Because these are specialty exercises, probably a little bit more for somebody on the advanced side. Um, with that being said, you know, if you're more on the beginner kind of novice side, um, you can still check it out and see what you think. Um, I would consider myself probably a little more on the advanced side, not to, you know, toot my own horn. Uh, but I've been doing this for a little while and I've actually never really seen these exercises. So uh, all that being said, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what you might be able to do with a dip belt, go ahead and stay tuned and we'll get started. All right. So before I get into the exercises, I just want to show you guys how I'm rigging this up. I basically just took two straps. I took two straps here instead of taking a thicker strap um, just because I happen to, you know, have two bands and I feel like this is a good tension for me on the exercises I'm going to show you guys. You know, the thing to keep in mind is you're going to need a pretty strong band. Um, I actually have a Perform Better and an Elite FTS, so I'm, I'm not partial to any band maker, but I think they make some pretty good and pretty durable ones, both of those companies. And uh, I can link, you know, them at the bottom of this video. Um, I put two on here because it just gives me a good amount of unloading. And so as I'm going to show you in these exercises, you're going to want to basically have a strong enough band where you're not going to fall forward against your weight and you have to factor in the weight of your body plus the weight you're going to be using and uh, that'll make more sense after I demonstrate what we're going to do here and so what I've done is I've just taken a big carabiner you know with you know again two bands um, again this certainly could have been a big one all I'm going to do then is just hook my dip belt onto this thing and then basically what I have now is I just have a cool little sling thing that I can effectively take my body into and so again I can put my body in here and now I can give my weight to it and I'm not going to fall down. So, you know, you can sort of do that, uh, you know, that, that Michael Jackson. And actually, you could even do that as an exercise if you wanted to. And so basically, I can turn forward or I can, you know, be, be backward facing. And same kind of thing, you know, I can give this my weight. And I basically am in here and I'm not going to go anywhere. And so, you know, if I had a stronger band, this is obviously going to let me move less. Or I could even maybe put more tension on the band by running it behind something else if you wanted to. You want a strong enough band where you can give it your weight and you're also not putting so much on it that it might snap on you. Um, so obviously always, you know, there's the disclaimer, I would say, you know, check these bands, make sure they're not going to snap. Um, but bands that are, you know, nice and durable, don't have any tears. You know, I feel pretty good giving this my weight and I feel pretty comfortable in here. And so the cool thing now is I'm going to show you guys is I can exercise inside this thing and I can change the angles because as the old saying goes, you change the angle, you change the exercise. And uh, that can be a nice thing to do when you're trying to give a muscle a little bit of novelty, right? And that's sort of the game when you're talking about bodybuilding. And, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily a bodybuilder, but I think some of their principles are very effective. So increasing muscle hypertrophy is something that's applicable, I think, not just to bodybuilders, but to, to a lot of the population. And so sometimes hitting an exercise or, or a muscle group, for, for that matter, um, from a different angle can be a good thing. And certainly for somebody, again, who's skewing towards intermediate and certainly advanced, you know, novelty is oftentimes what you need push those gains along because it gets harder to make gains the more advanced you are. And so all of a sudden you try an old exercise you might have you know been doing for a long time, throw a little bit of a unique spin on it, and maybe you can get some gains and, and tap into something you weren't necessarily tapping into before. Um, so this is the sling. So let's go ahead and get to the exercises. All right, so one of my favorite applications for this thing right now is doing a curl, essentially a line curl. And so now if I were to grab a pair of dumbbells, and sometimes getting the dumbbells can be a little tricky. Luckily, I happen to have a rack close by. And then from there, you know, because I'm able to give my weight to this thing, and again, you can play around with the angles and decide, you know, how much weight you're able to give it. Certainly, you can always add a little more tension or, you know, stronger straps if you feel like you're not able to really give your weight to this thing. And so from here, what's nice is I'm not really straddling, you know, that bench. You know, I can just lean forward. And there's something about leaning forward this angle, as I described in another video. You know, you're doing concentration curls. It's just, I think, because you're getting some extra blood flow to it, just really does a nice job making you feel like you can dial in that tension on the biceps. And so if I go here, effectively, almost like doing a concentration curl. Now, you could probably do a concentration curl here as well, you know, if you wanted to just, you know, kind of do something like this. You know, I don't necessarily think that's an, a better way to do a uh, concentration curl, though, because I actually like to brace my hand against something when I'm doing a concentration curl or at least brace it on my knee. So I don't think there's really any advantage with this on a concentration curl, but that line curl I showed a moment ago, I think it's just great. I really feel like I can dial that tension in. It feels good. And again, if you're at a point where you don't want to keep adding more bands and, you know, maybe you don't want to buy new bands to give you enough tension because, you know, as the weights get heavier, 
you're going to have to have stronger bands to, to offset that because, you know, it's basically like you're making yourself heavier. And so what I really like to do actually on this one is to add some BFR bands. And uh, the cool thing about BFR, I talked about in another video, so I won't talk about it at length here. But what I will say is you don't have to use as much load to essentially get the, the similar training effect. And so when you put a BFR band on, I can use the smaller weights. And so there, I, therefore, I don't really have to worry so much about having super strong straps to hold me up. But again, you know, if I wanted to use heavier weights, I could put a stronger band on here. And that'd be fine also. But this is basically a modification of the line curl, and I like this one a lot. All right, so speaking of curls, another curl variation that I like, and I generally don't like doing incline curls in general, so I, I shouldn't say that I like it because incline curls, I think, can sometimes be a little tough, you know, on the, you know, the long head of the bicep. Sometimes people start getting a little bit of that irritation, you know, that they experience. And so I'd say tread a little carefully when you're doing incline curls. Um, but if you're going to do them, I think this is kind of a nice way to do it. And you can do it in a way where your arms aren't, you know, really way too far in extension because I think people run into trouble sometimes on these when they're a little too far into extension and so I'll just kind of throw this thing you know somewhere on the upper back you know give a little weight to this and then off I would go here into a sort of an incline curl so this thing's got me sort of cradled in here I'm able to give it some weight and again this is just kind of a modification on how you could do an incline curl if you wanted to do that so obviously you couldn't stand at an angle like this without this suspension type device on you because you'd fall backwards so that's why you'd have to do it with a bench um, so I wouldn't again set this thing up specifically just to do this exercise but if it was already up there I just wanted a little bit of extra emphasis kind of on that outer part of the bicep you know I might throw these in here just kind of as a fun exercise um, I don't tend to do this exercise very often and I don't do it very heavy um, so this would be an exercise where if I was going to do it, I probably would definitely also throw those BFR bands on just to uh, reduce the amount of load I have to use. So I'm not getting myself into a strain situation. So again, that's incline curls with this uh, suspension device here. And so aside from those lying curls, something that I like to do with this are actually side laterals. And so normally a side lateral, you know, you're going to, you're going to maybe take a soft stance. You know, you stand up pretty tall and you try to dial it in on that, you know, medial or middle, you know, part of your, your deltoid muscle. And so I like to actually use this thing as kind of a hybrid on, on kind of a rear delt fly with a side lateral. And so I can get into a little bit of a unique angle here. So I can kind of lean forward some. So I'm not completely face down the way I might want to be if I was doing, a, you know, a kind of a rear delt fly. But I'm also not completely vertical the way I'd be if I was doing kind of side laterals. And so what I tend to do here is just find an angle that's maybe a little bit closer to a side lateral, but leaning forward a bit. And just sort of come in here and so i'm sort of getting that middle bicep middle you know i'm sorry middle deltoid with a little bit of that posterior deltoid here and again you know the tendency to shrug can be a little high so if you notice you're wanting to shrug and get in those upper trapezius on this one then you know obviously try to rein that in but uh just a nice way to you know get sort of a combination so a bit of a hybrid movement you know setting that up on a bench is a little awkward you know one because Sometimes the head of the bench is just not in the right spot. And what happens on the bench oftentimes is, you know, we tend to arch our back too much and, you know, then we're kind of in here. So what's nice about this is I feel like I'm just able to find that angle a little more easily. And then I can kind of dial that tension in a bit more effectively, you know, again, kind of on that back mid part of the shoulder. So kind of a cool way to use this. I haven't really been able to simulate it as well on a bench. That's why I thought I'd bring it to you guys today. And so that's the uh, rear-ish, you know, I'll call it a rear-ish delt fly. Uh, side lateral type maneuver. All right, so last one I want to throw to you guys, just kind of a fun one. Um, I don't tend to do a lot of assisted pull-ups. I mean, fortunately, I'm strong enough where I can actually use, you know, weight to do pull-ups. Um, but sometimes I might be doing a kind of like a burnout or a drop set. I'll start with weight, drop down to body weight, and then even add assistance to kind of really get those last, you know, reps out. Um, obviously, though, if you're at a point, and I'm not trying to, you know, toot my own horn here, if you're at a point where you're just getting started, you can't even do pull-ups with body weight yet, then obviously assisted pull-ups or a nice kind of segue into doing regular pull-ups. Um, there's other ways as well, but that's one of them. And uh, it's a little awkward, really, just kind of getting yourself into place sometimes with just a single band. You know, you're trying to get your foot in there, turning yourself into contortionist and, and try not to fall over. Um, and so it's just a little awkward. Luckily, with something, you know, a big sling like this, it's less awkward. And also, you can get both your feet in there. So it's just kind of a cool thing to do. So a lot of times, I'll, you, know, you, you still have to kind of go that, do that initial little contortionist movement. You know, put the hands up there. And then I'll put both of my feet on this thing. And then from there, you know, I would just come in there 
and do my pull-ups, okay? I'm a little wide right now, but I'm just trying to show you guys. Obviously, I could have put these bands in a little tighter, you know, if I wanted to not be so wide. But I'm just trying to get my hands out of the way right now so I can show you guys what I'm up to. And again, I would just do my pull-ups that way, okay? And then stepping out of here, you know, just be a little careful, obviously. Get your foot out of there. A little bit less awkward, a little bit less, you know, of a hassle. Um, and I like it because it's just a little more pure in that, you know, when you have the band offset on just one leg, which many people do, you know, it is going to throw your weight off a little bit. So in theory, this is just a little more symmetrical. And that's kind of a minute point. For many people, it doesn't matter that much. But uh, again, you know, I always try to strive for symmetry if we can get it. And uh, that's there for you. So again, if you happen to have a dip belt laying around and you had a couple of bands, you could certainly rig that up. Um, if you only have one band, though, and you don't have a dip belt, you know, do it the old way. That's fine. All right. So another cool application I like for this thing is just sort of a positioning thing. It's not really an exercise. It's just a way to give your back a little decompression or traction, as they call it, which are really just fancy ways of saying unloading your spine some. So, you know, I don't necessarily say you have to throw this thing on here or set this up just for this purpose per se. But if I already have it up here because I'm doing curls and maybe a few other things and it's, and it's up here before I'll take it down and I want a little decompression on my back. You know, certainly if you did some heavy squats or something, you know, you could just come in here and basically you're just going to, you know, give your weight to this thing. And so this thing's obviously pulling in this direction. And so I can just kind of walk the hands out almost like in a down dog position, you know, and just take some deep breaths here. You know, it kind of looks almost like a child's pose, but my knees aren't bent. And, you know, I'm just kind of hanging out here, you know, take some deep breaths through your belly if you can. You know, you can certainly change the angles a little bit depending. And, you know, if this thing were heavy enough, you could probably even suspend yourself. I don't usually go that heavy on this, though, or, or that strong on the resistance. Um, you know, if you, I generally wouldn't encourage somebody to go to a extreme ranges of motion. But, you know, if you wanted just a little extra stretch into a side bend rotation kind of movement, you know, as long as it's gentle and, and within, you know, the range that you have, you're not trying to really you know, increase laxity. That's something you can also do as well. Just a nice little decompression maneuver, um, which you can do with this sort of suspension dip belt uh, contraption that I've set up. So uh, if you want to try it out, give it a shot. You know, obviously people tend to use those back hyperextension machines for this. And if they're in a commercial gym, you know, they lay on that and they can kind of do a similar thing. Um, but I just like the fact that this thing is kind of pulling you. So, you know, it's, it's on a very low level. And I'm talking, you know, very minute. You know, you're getting maybe just a little bit of increased separation here because I have this thing pulling me kind of up toward the ceiling, kind of almost, you know, giving me a little separation there maybe. And so it's just kind of a nice thing to do. I wouldn't say do it for a long time. You know, you can give it a minute or two if you feel up to it. Obviously, if the blood's rushing to your head too much, you know, come out of there. Come out of there gingerly, though, I should say also. So, you know, when you're down here and you probably don't want to actually just flail yourself over, you know, come down here kind of easily. And then, you know, certainly if you've been in here for a while, you know, walk the hands back kind of gently. Come out of it easily because, you know, if you've been into a fairly deep stretch, and you come out of it quickly, sometimes those muscles are going to want to guard. They're going to fight against you. And then all of a sudden, you're actually feeling tighter than when you started, which isn't what you want. So come out of that nice and easy. But that's just a little back traction with this, with this uh, suspension dip belt thing here. All right, so that's the video for today. Just kind of a novelty, a little bit of a fun one. Um, you know, I, I try to put some content on this channel. It's a little more in the serious department or at least a little bit more in the uh, it's kind of a long explanation department. And then I like to try to maybe throw in some things that are a little more on the fun side once in a while. And I would ho hopefully, you know, try to put this in that category. Uh, you know, takeaways from this is it's not the end all be all. If, if you never touch these exercises, it's not going to make or break anybody. Uh, great gains are out there uh, in the absence of this thing. Uh, I'm just, you know, one of those people who's always looking with ways to tinker with exercises, looking for different ways to put a kind of a little bit of a different spin on something I might already be doing. Because again, you know, as I mentioned earlier, a novelty can be a great thing for somebody who's been working out for a long time. And so just taking an old dog and throwing a little bit of a new trick at it, I think can be useful. And this is just one way to do it. So, you know, the thing is too, I don't always like to, I do use a lot of equipment on this channel, but I don't always want people to have to get new equipment all the time per se. And uh, many people who've been, you know, in the iron game, as we call it, um, tend to have dip belts, right? They're pretty common. Dips are a very popular exercise. And so if you already have a dip belt, maybe you've been working out for a while, you've, you've got a couple of bands laying around. I'll, I'll put the links to these bands at the bottom of the page. I'll link to a dip belt as well. Um, you know, but again, dip, dip belts are a dime a dozen, so I don't necessarily think you need any one, you know, specifically per se. But uh, all that being said, that's the video for today. Um, but more good content in the pipeline, you know, serious topics, rehab related topics, and maybe some more fun topics like this. I'm going to try to upload some older content as well that I had initially shot that didn't have very good audio. So I'm going to hopefully get some better audio for you guys. And I'm also going to maybe talk to you guys about some other things I've learned since then, because some of these videos I'm realizing now are uh, more than a year old and it's hard to believe this channel has already been around that long but uh, time flies when you're having a good time 
Um, subscribe if you like this stuff. Definitely know what you guys think. Um, any comments on this, you know, please let me know. Uh, if anybody actually thinks of other exercises you can do with this, let me know. Um, I did um, think of a few things I didn't put on this uh, video per se, um, but maybe at some point I will. So all that being said, I hope you guys have some fun.